Well, Marina, we're really excited to have you here with us. I'm looking forward to sharing your insights with our students. Why don't you go ahead and get us started with a little introduction about who you are and who you work for. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, my name is uh, Marina Ostropolchenko. I, um, you know, I was uh, born and raised in Russia. I uh, started my undergraduate degree there and got a chance to study here in the U.S. as an exchange student. I've learned a lot through that experience, kind of, um, you know, getting to learn a new culture, a new language, a new kind of a school system. I fell in love with the college system here. I've um, gotten my master's degree here from University of uh, Nebraska Omaha. I did my master's of, um, in information systems, uh, got a chance to uh, kind of be a graduate assistant and help out PhD students with their research. And um, through that process, there was an opportunity to be um, a mentee with one of the um, experience, more experienced uh, developers and managers here in Omaha area. And one of the mentors uh, was a developer in Blue Cross Blue Shield of Nebraska. And she really helped me to kind of understand how I can relate things that I've learned through my masters and apply them into the real world and see how I can transfer my skills from you know academia into the actual corporate America. So with that, I got an, a chance to intern in Blue Cross Blue Shield in Nebraska. And that's where I really got an, a lot of my experience from technology perspective, got introduced into what ETL is and how do you develop the code? How do you um, do all of the maintenance, productionalizing, kind of really um, having that hands-on and um, you know, real world experience. Through the internship, got a chance to start the full-time. So initially I was working as a tester and this is not something that you would learn in college. <laughs> so you would definitely know about the testing process, but um, definitely when you, kind of get your first opportunity or kind of get your foot in the door. I feel like uh, it's important to not shy away from something that you're probably less familiar with. And that's what happened to me. So I worked as a test engineer, basically validating and testing ETL code, um, not really developing a lot of it, but that's what really uh, got me a kickstart on uh, my career as a data engineer. So I, uh, I've learned a lot through working with ETL developers and kind of, uh, you know, collaborating across the organization. I think what really helped me on my path is uh, try trying to expand and go out there and kind of uh, don't be shy from going out there and talking to like senior developers or maybe, you know, sysadmins or people who are in a different area outside of your team. So I really, um, I, I had a good relationship with DBAs and um, like senior ETL developers and that, and even architects, and actually having that experience and exposure to somebody who is doing work outside of your, you know, day to day, as a test engineer, you know, there was really not much of a connection between me, you know, what I did and the senior architects, for example. But you know, I I went out there and kind of volunteered for some of the work, and that's how I transitioned into data engineer role. Uh, there was a new team that got started in a different department, which is a very not something that I imagined to do. So I was in the IT area, then I transitioned into analytics. And analytics actually, uh, right now, uh, there is a big move that is happening, I feel, across the industry, across different industries, and even um, within ETL and data and AI, where there is a huge need for uh, people with a skill set, like myself, um, where you can uh, kind of be a liaison between business and technology. So you basically have a technical skill set on how to develop um, how do you, and I think I should have mentioned ETL is an extract, transform, load. And right now there's more of a move towards ELT, which is extract, load, transform. But all of that is basically, how do you move information? How do you move the data and make more sense out of it? So like in my role, um, it's important to take the information and provide the analysts with the most um, easy way to transform that information into the insight. So um, I would say the main um, the main focus right now in the industry is kind of having that technical skill set, kind of circling back to that importance of having technical skill set, being able to write code in Python, or uh, being able to kind of use SQL and then transition that into something that is more applicable in the business and answer the question that will allow to have that information that could definitely drive some kind of either you know um, savings on the side of uh, 
some of the more of you know like you can save some money as far as like using technology right but you can also save by going in and understanding how the business works so having that connection between business and technologies um, i feel like is a core in my role kind of helping to bridge that gap um, kind of going back a little bit to that journey coming from data engineering right transitioning into analytics area being a data engineer a technical person working with analysts and helping them to learn and um, kind of get the data that they need so that they can then transform that into the inside kind of led me into this passion of uh, working with data and in general kind of understanding you know what is the opportunity out there and how do you create how do you turn that uh, data into an opportunity for the company i worked with blue cross Blue Shield in nebraska for six years and it has been a great experience and i know it's not very common for somebody to stick around for that long but I would say what kept me there is the fact that you can transition between different areas. And if you're given an opportunity within the same organization, you know, it's a great way to um, build your brand and build your network. So I know often people like to switch companies, but I found that it's important to kind of, um, you know, I grew from intern into test engineer, into data engineer, into senior data engineer. So all of that experience in, in, uh, in general, I think, help me grow and as long as you're growing within the same organization i feel like that's that's just awesome um opportunity for you to not being able to transition but recently um the few um there was a you know linkedin you have your profile set up and i have um i had a recruiter reach out often um i didn't really look for an opportunity and honestly uh, I was really happy in what I'm doing, and I'm still really happy that I get a chance to work with data on a daily basis. So having that recruiter reach out was a um, chance for me to explore opportunities outside of my organization. And having um, exposure to a global um, company that touches so many areas in the world and just having that global exposure where you can continue building your skill set where you just you know you just can't say no to the opportunity like that and although it was heartbreaking for me to leave blue cross um you know i, I had a lot of support for my um managers and the people around me and that's what's the importance of being in a company that supports you and that's what really helped me to kind of you know move away from blue cross and start my career at pwc yeah and um so right now I work as a business in intelligence engineer in PwC, which is a little bit different than what I was doing at Blue Cross. But that's the beauty of the uh, of your path, right? You kind of uh, you kind of uh, pave your way and trying to figure out what is the best way to grow your career. So for me, you know, that was the the good opportunities. Then and, um, and I know it's kind of hard to say. There's a saying. Um, I think it was Steve Jobs on his commencement speech. You know, you can't connect. The dots looking backwards you know you can only um you, you cannot really make it looking forward right you only know what's happening looking backwards right so now looking back i feel like i i luckily i, I made the right choices and um yeah i was uh, fortunate enough to have this opportunity and um yeah it's it's interesting how the paths could lie right you never know what happens like coming from myself coming from a different country and studying here and being able to um, have these chances of working for a global company right now Absolutely. Well, I want to talk a little bit about a few things that you mentioned. One is taking those questions and turning them into analytics. What kind of tools do you use? What kind of thought process goes into doing that? And then you also mentioned that you have a lot of conversations with people outside of your work sphere. As this is an MBA program, a lot of them are going to come with industry expertise and then need to work collaboratively with those IT individuals. Some of those insights that you can garnish from those conversations you have, I think would be invaluable. Uh, yeah, I, I agree. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, so I think you did mention, you know, the insights. I will probably touch on that first. For some, if you are a manager, or if you're in a leadership position and you're trying to create value for your company, I feel like often um, it's important to have your technical resources um, being well versed in the business terms and it's important to create the clarity at least from my perspective it's it's been really helpful to understand the business as much as technology and that's when it comes to the tools um as we all know technology changes on a daily basis and things could be very different you know tomorrow um tools are very important like in my case i i use a lot of cloud technology 
um, specifically, I got a chance to work with Azure and Databricks and you know, using Python code, how do you develop the code kind of um, that can work across the environments, which is great, right? You, you learn the tools, you learn the technology, but the, the skills are transferable across, across the platforms. And often um, if there is a change that happens, which the only constant is the change, right? So if the change happens and you're able to transfer those skills across different platforms, like let's say, you know, Google Cloud or you're going into AWS, I think it's important to have those um, technical resources, you know, transferred across different platforms. So it's not very really tool specific. You have to be tool agnostic. And that's definitely is the key mindset, I think, that everybody in technical role should have. And, you know, whoever is in leadership role should also be open to those new opportunities that people can kind of expand and do things differently. Um, um, but yeah, right now, you know, it could be Databricks, and, um, but tomorrow that could be tool X and it could be completely different from what we're doing right now. How do you take those questions and turn them into analysis that you're doing in the data? What kind of process do you go through to be able to make that analytical query to the data? Usually I try to collaborate as much as I can with all of the analysts and the stakeholders. Um, another another um, key in my career, it's been uh, having a direct relationship with a stakeholder, being a technical person, but having that conversation with your stakeholders is crucial um, because often the communication channel that goes beyond, uh, you know, having somebody in, um, uh, you know, product owner role or scrum master role and those um, folks are able to communicate, but then if you have a question and you're able directly to go to the stakeholder and communicate effectively, um, outside of the technical terms and making it clear what you're trying to achieve that not only helps to grow um, your technical talent, but also allows you to fix and act upon different changes in a really rapid way so that you can be agile and adopt to all of the requirement changes, which often happens with any project that I have had so far. Um, but yeah, that, I think that's the key, right? Having that skill set where your technical folks could communicate clearly with your stakeholders. But what are some of the things that stakeholders have done that made it easier for you to communicate with them? Oh yeah, well, I would say one is I had, um, I, I always had an opportunity to have that exposure and I think that's that's the big step. So it's it has never been uh, where you would be uh, you would shy away from a question or you would shy away from that communication channel. So it's been open communication channel where you can clearly, uh, where you can, where you are not afraid to fail and you can ask the question that you need. Um, and second, I would say is the, um, the leadership, the mindset that you have, right? The leadership um, within the team, the leadership within the company is allowing, like, let's say, you know, if, if the mindset across the organization is where you can really expand and try to do, to do things differently, that helps you to be confident in the fact that you could uh, experiment and allow the stakeholder to see the deliverables faster without you thinking, oh, maybe this is not good enough. So um, kind of uh, feeling, following the approach of fail, fail fast, right, improve and continue going is definitely being, um, I think, a very, helpful and very um, insightful way for me to kind of grow and help the company and work on different projects across across the company. Absolutely. So as you look to your future and the ways that you communicate with the individuals around you, what kind of technical skills are you bringing to bear to those conversations? Are you talking about the code that you're writing? Or are you focusing on what kind of questions that you're trying to solve? Or are you talking about the actual algorithms that you're going to apply to the data? What kind of conversations are you having around the needs of those stakeholders? Yeah, uh, well, I would say often know your audience, right? If the stakeholder is technical enough where they can understand and appreciate the algorithms and the technology part of it, you really could be open and kind of communicate clearly of what you're trying to achieve and how you're doing it. But often, um, at least in my experience, I found that um, some of the stakeholders are less technical, especially in an analytics area where they would like to see more of a you know, final outcome where whether it's a report or if it's a dashboard or if it's a, some kind of solution, right? Um, I think it was important for me to learn how to target certain um, aspects of the, my work, right? So let's say if it's a code, I would love to share, 
I'm, I'm all about technology. I, I enjoy that part, but it's important for me to kind of uh, tone it down and make sure I don't really um, kind of, I wanna make sure that the audience really understands uh, what I'm trying to convey or the message I'm trying to um, communicate. So yes, technology is great, but if the stakeholder is not very technical, then you just really have to think about how you uh, target those questions in a way that is clear for them. And I think that's the key, right? Um, what is important for them, but then at the same time, how technical do you wanna be? And um, kind of having that balance, um, what I think is very helpful in any project that you would be working in, and I think across different companies. Absolutely. Well, I, I definitely appreciate your insights. Are there any trends that you're seeing when it comes to the data or the tools that you're using? I know you mentioned being agnostic when it comes to those data tools, but are there any major trends in the industry that you're seeing when it comes to being able to visualize the data or the way the data is stored? I would mention uh, probably two trends that I've noticed so far. Um, one is um, the availability of some of the open source tools, right? There's so many, um, I think there's a, there's a lot of growth going on. You know, you can, you can go out there and use, um, there's a DBT tool, right? That is openly available, Apache Spark, um, the growth of, you know, use of Databricks and that could be applied across different uh, platforms, right? It could be, uh, standalone Databricks environment that could be incorporated within one of the cloud environments. But Apache Spark and using um, obviously SQL, SQL in general is not going anywhere, right? You, uh, that's a definitely by default, right? Uh, something that will stay, stay um, and a lot of tools I notice kind of, um, I know there is a, there's a change, but often I know there's, there's this, um, lineage towards using the same kind of um, approach or the same kind of um, languages, you know, using Python, for example, right? You can use Python in different environments and different tools, but it's a very different way of implementing Python. And although, um, although it feels like it is the same language, it could be used very differently. So, you know, Apache Spark, Python, um, SQL, those are probably, the, um, and, there is also a move towards machine learning, right? And everybody was looking forward to kind of using those technologies. So distributed environments are way better, you know, in sense of um, the volume of the data you're trying to use and the different things that you're trying to do, the different type of analysis. So um, definitely, you know, targeting more of a distributed environments that allow you to have that flexibility across different languages. And also implementing that open source tools within your current stack, um, whether you're uh, just trying to navigate your way in this world, or you're just trying, you know, trying to implement something in the existing environment, uh, yeah, I would say Databricks, Apache Spark, SQL, um, those are kind of the main trends that I've seen so far. Well, any last thoughts or comments for our students as they work on their MBA program? Well. Um, coming from technical background, I would just kind of um, encourage having having a leader who understands technology is invaluable, and um, kind of having an MBA MBA is great, right? But having that technical background often helps to build um, a connection with the resources that are you know solely like developers such as myself. But um, yeah, I think that's the last um, advice that I have is just to kind of. Um, let technology be the driver, but also be a tool agnostic where you can kind of apply different things in different environments and allow your people to grow in the, with the business mindset, right? That, that they can implement those tools that best suit your company, um, allow them to experiment and, you know, fail and improve. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to be with me here today. If our students would like to get a hold of you, are they able to do so? And if so, how? Yeah, I would provide you with the um, email address and, you know, um, yeah, if uh, obviously LinkedIn is great. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll definitely send you out the email and the link to my uh, LinkedIn profile. Wonderful. I'll make sure to share those with the students. And again, thank you for your spending some time with us here today. And we truly appreciate all your insights when it comes to the data mining and data science industry. Yeah, I'm happy to help. Happy to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions, comments, anything else you want to go over or you have questions about? 